With me now, Zan Mayer, Africa Head, Global Commodity Finance at Nedbank Corporate and Investment Banking. Zan, good to be chatting to you from COP27 here, Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt. And of course, the world food crisis is taking center stage. And that means farmers are clearly at the center of many, many discussions. Give me your overriding thoughts on the context of agriculture as you see it today. Ronan, thanks for having me. I think it's a it's, it's a it's a critical topic in terms of the African continent, and and it's not only about climate change. I think what happened in the last years, apart from the fact that I think the commercial farming sector showed a remarkable resilience, we were almost in the midst of a perfect storm. We we sitting in in, in extremely inflationary pressures. There's a talk of a global recession. There's the Ukraine-Russia war, of course, that, that increases input cost by, by more than 50% in some regions. So I think from an agricultural perspective, um, it's important that commercial banks and providers of finance in the sector look at the sector very, very responsibly. We, we, are, we are sitting in a, in, in, a, in a world where we know that food production on the African continent needs to double. And the last thing we can do is to actually approach this without taking into consideration the fact that agriculture is the largest user of water and soil. Um, those resources we cannot neglect. So, so it's the responsibility of the financiers in terms of the sector to make sure that this food security issue is approached very, very responsibly and carefully. It also is a complicated value chain. So how are banks like Nedbank helping in terms of climate adaptation throughout the whole agricultural value chain, Zan? So if, if one looks at it from a simplistic you know, angle, you could say that the normal model of providing land against as collateral for a loan cannot simply be enough anymore. We need to look at this loan provision as a different, let's call it a different solution to the farmer as a whole. You talk about the supply chain. Now, let's start at fertilizer for The correct use of fertilizer and the use of the correct fertilizer is critical in terms of soil preservation, um, soil moisture concentration. These things are, are things that I think banks traditionally have not looked at. Um, you know, we, we talk about mechanization and the supply chain in terms of increasing the quality of the produce. Now, now, those are things that are not generally solved by commercial banks. And it's normally looked to the farmer saying that if you want to mechanize, it's your problem. Give me collateral and I'll make sure that that problem is solved. And um, one talks about logistics, and I'm sure that's something that COP27 also would look at in terms of storage, um, cooling and refrigeration. Um, you know, the, 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 the very sad and very shocking statistic is that Africa loses 30% of its agricultural produce purely by means of we cannot store it, we cannot transport it, we cannot preserve it, and we cannot export it because of lack of logistics and, and lack of expertise. So so I think that together with, with, the, with the primary production angle, um, we need to look at supply chain as a whole um, and the provision of markets equally important if a farmer does not see the delivery of his product getting a meaningful impact in terms of his economic progress he's not going to grow the commodity so if, if one has you know these these let's call it um, uh, traders coming in and unscrupulously exploiting small-scale farmers that is something that we can't definitely play a role in but it's important that we are aware of those issues and then Zan, let's also just talk about cooperatives, which are one way that farmers can mass scale and basically then engage in markets and in that value chain. But financing of cooperatives, they aren't traditional financial tools that are friendly to embracing a cooperative from a financial perspective, correct? That's, that's a very good point. So we choose cooperatives as an entry point for a wholesale finance offering very carefully. And that cooperative needs to be representative of the farmer base. And then we look at a borrowing based finance structure where we look at the underlying security. Now, um, we form partnerships with these cooperatives. We carefully look at their credit policies. And in a way, they are actually a, an aid in terms of allowing finance to get into the sector. Um, these cooperatives have got people on the ground, they've got infrastructure, retail stores, um, delivery of fuel and energy to the farmers, um, even technical expertise that they, that they have access to. And some of these cooperatives have a vision in terms of uplift, upliftment of, of, of farmers in the sector. So for us to work with them is actually an important tool to get the finance out there and grow the sector. But carefully and, and, and obviously, you know, looking at these cooperatives in a, in, in a way that say, if you share my vision, 
then I will partner with you. But if it's, this is for, for financial gain only, it doesn't really make sense. And then just in terms of farmers and their importance to you as Nedbank, uh, commercial and investment banking, a final word, Zan? I think for, for us, a farmer needs to stay on his land. Um, you know, we, we've had a fantastic two years and, I, and we talked about, uh, you know, pronounced La Nina's um, with good rainfall and farmers are building balance sheets, but we need to realize this is a cycle and, and we cannot be a good weather partners to our farmers. We need to run with them in the cycle and we know that there are going to be difficult times ahead. I talk about challenges in terms of input costs and, and globalization of the agri sector. So, so all these challenges are going to be facing us as banks and farmers in the future. And it's important that we hold hands to make sure the sector stays stable and sustainable. Zan Mayer, Africa Head, Global Commodity Finance at Nedbank, Corporate and Investment Banking. Thank you so much for joining me as we are here at Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt, where COP27 is in full session.